What is up everybody, this is your guy Kalai, and welcome back to Budget Buys. And in this video I'm going to be continuing my quest to review every single one of the Booga gaming accessories that have been released by Five Below. This is video number two of seven, and if you want to make sure you're one of the first people to check out these videos when they go live, feel free to subscribe. Now it's pretty obvious that this video is going to be covering the Booga LED gaming mouse, and just like with my keyboard review, I'm going to be going for bonus points by comparing this mouse to the other gaming mouse offered by Five Below. If you want an in-depth review of this mouse, I did post one a while back, and I'll have a card pop up right about now. Anyway, let's go on to the back of the box and see what kind of features we have to look forward to. According to the box, this mouse has an adjustable DPI, six buttons, an ergonomic design, a 500 hertz polling rate, a braided cord, USB connector, and color changing LEDs. Now, there are a couple of things I want to talk about before I even take the mouse out of the box, and the main one is the buttons. Now, in this text box, it kind of implies that the mouse only has six buttons, but the website, and even down here in the fine print, it does say that this mouse has seven buttons. And I'm going to have to agree with the seven button classification, but more on that later. The other thing I want to talk about is the 500 hertz polling rate. That might confuse a few people, but all that really means is that the mouse is going to check for its position 500 times a second. If you want to know how that compares with other mice, the three most common polling rates are 125 hertz, 500 hertz, and 1000 hertz. That means that this mouse is kind of middle of the road when it comes to the more common polling rates, but a lot of the reviews I've read say that there's not much of a difference between 500 and 1000 hertz. All right, here we have both of the mice, and I think the best way to start this breakdown would have to be addressing some of the more common questions that I get in my review of the Yu Yusei mouse. And one of those questions is, how do you change the DPI on the mouse? In the case of the Yu Yusei mouse, you don't. This is a fixed DPI mouse, whereas on the Buga mouse, you can use these two buttons right here to reduce or increase the DPI settings on the mouse. And I just realized that I've been using the term DPI quite a bit without actually explaining what it is. DPI comes from dots per inch, and it's basically how many pixels or dots across your monitor the mouse cursor is going to move for every inch you move your mouse. Now, according to the manual, the Booga mouse has five different DPI settings, with those being 1200, 1600, 3500, 4800, and 7200. Now, I'm not going to actually demonstrate them just because I don't really have a quantifiable way to demonstrate that. Yes, I could set up a camera to watch my hand while doing a screen capture so that I can show you my hand gliding across a mouse pad while the cursor moves across the screen and try my dangdest to make sure each and every iteration of that test was identical, but I really don't have time for that. I've got seven of these videos to record. Instead, you're going to have to take my word for it that it does indeed have five different settings. I did actually do at least that much testing. It does seem like the UUC mouse has a DPI of around 1200, which is the lowest setting on the Booga mouse. Now, for those of you wondering why the heck you would even want that many DPI settings available at the click of a button, well, there's quite a few reasons. First off, it allows you to adjust the sensitivity of your mouse without having to go into the settings of your operating system or whatever game you're playing. This means that you can adjust things per game or even change things up right in the middle of a game. I know that I sometimes like to reduce the DPI settings on my mouse when I'm aiming in a first person shooter so that I can get things a lot more precise. Now for the second most popular question on the video for the UUSA mouse, does this mouse have side buttons? And on the case of the UUSA, no. You just have the two buttons up top and the center scroll wheel click. Now on the Booga mouse, not only do you have the DPI buttons, the left click, right click, and center click, but you do also have the side buttons here. 
And to bring things back around to what I mentioned about the box, that's your seven buttons. Now, a lot of people aren't really used to having mice with more than just the standard setup like you have here, so you're probably wondering what the heck those buttons are even for. In-game, you can map quite a few different functions to them, such as scrolling through your inventory. Also, if you're in a web browser, those can act as your forward and back keys. Not gonna lie, that's mostly what I use them for. If I'm not mistaken, you can't really map anything to the DPI buttons, and I don't really think you want to either, simply due to the fact that every time you use them for whatever you have them mapped to, you're also going to be changing the DPI settings on your mouse, since that is hardware-based and not software-based. Now, the most popular question I receive about the UUSA mouse involves the LED effects, so let me get these turned on. And let me turn off my recording lights so that I can do this justice. And the question that I was teasing you with was, why does my mouse only light up red? And there's actually two reasons for that. First off is that the color changing LED inside of your mouse is dead. You're going to either need to go out and buy a new mouse or install a new LED, which fortunately color changing LEDs aren't that expensive, like I mentioned in the keyboard video. You can get a bag of 100 of them for about $3. And the other reason why your mouse is lighting up red is due to the fact that you, you say, did not install any kind of shielding in between the light that the mouse uses to detect movement and the inside of the mouse. Now, that's not typically an issue, but when you have translucent plastic that's meant to show an LED effect inside of the mouse, anytime you move it, you're going to get a red light. Fortunately, that's not as much of an issue in the Booga mouse. They seem to have done their homework when it comes to installing proper shielding. Now let's get these lights back on. Now that we've got those questions out of the way, let's focus on some of the complaints that I had about the UUSA mouse in that video. And the first one has to be just the overall build quality. This plastic is very lightweight and flimsy, and if you squeeze it just right, it's going to flex. And I theorized that if you're prone to raging while gaming, you might grip it too tightly and end up breaking the mouse or just slam it down and do the same thing. And there happens to be at least one comment on that video where somebody mentioned doing just that. Of course, I don't know if they were just being facetious, so take that with a grain of salt. Fortunately, in the case of the Booga Mouse, everything feels a lot more sturdy. It's definitely not lightweight, it doesn't feel like it's going to get blown around, and everything seems properly reinforced. I'm not afraid that I'm going to crush this thing. Of course, some of that weight definitely comes from this metal plate that they installed in the bottom, and I'm going to talk more about that later. Another problem that I had with the build quality on the UUSA mouse is the scroll wheel. This thing is solid plastic, feels absolutely horrible to use. Let's see if you can hear the scraping. <sighs> I think I described it as a dumpster fire or something like that in the video, and I stand by it. I absolutely loathe using this scroll wheel. On the flip side, the Booga Mouse has a very smooth scroll. Oh yes. And it also has a nicely textured area, which I want to say is either silicone or rubberized plastic. It also has these translucent white areas that seem to be made of the same material as these other areas on the mouse to allow the LED effect to shine through. I should also mention that it feels like the rest of the mouse has the same coating, giving it a nice texture, especially when compared to this little guy. Oh, and I can't move on to the next part of this video without mentioning the braided cable because the box decided to make a big deal of that. What the braiding is going to do is add a little bit of structural integrity to the cable on your mouse. And this is going to go a long way in preventing fraying, breakage, and things like that. Now, the last thing I want to do before I wrap things up is a weigh-in, because I did make a little bit of a fuss when it comes to the weight of the mice. And to do that, I have the scale that I use when measuring out resin when I make dice. So let's get this turned on let it zero out, and test it out on the Booga Collector card that came with the mouse. Okay, that is 1.5 grams. Sounds about right. Let's get that out of the way. 
let's get things started with the UUSA mouse. There we go. It is 57 grams on the dot. All right, let's get this out of the way and bring in the Booga mouse. A whopping 99 grams and slowly increasing due to cable shifting. This puts the Booga mouse at nearly twice the weight of the UUSA mouse. Of course, Part of that is going to be the metal plate here, so let me take that off and see how much just the metal plate weighs. Here we go. The plate comes in at 10.4 grams. Now, of course, we're not just contending with the plate, but also the screws, so with those, we have a whopping 10.9 grams. Now, I know that doesn't seem like it makes much of a difference, but you'd be surprised by the amount of fine weight adjustment you get in some of the gaming mice in the mid to high price point range. To illustrate that point, here I have a rather old Logitech G5 with some of the nice rubberized plastic that's started to melt. Yay. But the most important thing is on the bottom. For down here, we have a removable weight plate and it's adjustable down to 1.7 grams per plate. So people are very persnickety about what weight their mouse is. And that pretty much covers everything when it comes to the Booga LED gaming mouse. In my opinion, this is actually a pretty dang decent mouse for the money. And in pretty much every category, I prefer it to the UUSA mouse. Be it the build quality, precision of control, number of buttons, or heck, even just the LED effect. And yes, I know I'm being a little unfair since one's a $5 mouse and one's a $10 mouse, but that's definitely worth the $5 upgrade. Like I said in the review of this mouse, if you do need one in a pinch and you only have $5, that's not terrible. It is going to be an input device on your PC. On that note, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.